All right, so I don't actually have my camera down here and we just decided to go ahead and get in the bees and I'm going to shoot it on my phone because the best camera is the one that you have on you and this is the one I have on me. But I'm gonna have to flip the screen around and put my glove on so I'm not gonna be able to move the view around very much. What do you see? We noticed that these two hives were buzzing quite a lot. Now this one's starting to have some come out now that he's messing with it. We just wanted to check and make sure since it was such a pretty day uh, that everything was okay. It looks quite okay. <laughs> Jeremiah assured me that it would be. Oh, they are not liking what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm no longer concerned that they've left. So I thought I was gonna make you guys a really cool bee video, um, but shortly after turning that shot off, I was holding the feeder as Jeremiah was trying to get it unstuck and we didn't have a smoker going. I don't think it would have made a difference anyway because the, that is our mean hive. We have a mean hive. We have two hives that are super chill and one that was wild caught and they're just angry. And uh, yeah, so the only thing that we have to take away from that little beekeeping incident, the only advice that I have to give you or lesson that you can learn is that don't be keeping yoga pants because I was not wearing regular pants and I didn't have any sort of like beekeeping pants on. I, it genuinely did not occur to me not to do that total rookie mistake. And uh, right after I turned to that camera shot on, I incurred um, several bee stings. Turns out it was about 13, um, all in the upper thigh region. So that was fun, um, super awesome. Lesson of the day, don't do your beekeeping in yoga pants. I'm fine. Lavender oil, great for bee stings, um, turns out. And here we are, two days later, didn't make a video yesterday. And now we're gonna go around the farm. And next time you see me doing any sort of beekeeping video, I will be a little more prepared than that time. <laughs> so this goat yard is now almost entirely empty. You see we're burning off a pile back there. Um, we're letting this yard rest. I've got two goats in here, but uh, we're gonna reseed this. We're gonna take them out of here and reseed this and bring some grass back into this yard. So our current like goal on our farm is that we are assessing the space we have, the animals we have, what our goals are, and we're basically making a plan to be able to do as much uh, rotational grazing as possible with the acreage we have. Now we have like right under seven, well, it's over seven acres total, but with the property next door and this property and what we're using of that, it's like right around seven acres. And we are kind of loosely laying out how we wanna move forward with some projects to steward the land we have. Like we had allowed this yard to get way too grazed down, grass doesn't even grow in part of it. And so like right now what we're doing is really making efforts to restore places like this. We are getting um, some equipment out here next month and we're going to get the rocks out of this field and seed this to have grass as well. That's, that's a two acre field, so that's pretty uh, substantial. Maya and I were just down in the basement. Um, it's kind of drizzly right now. It was raining. Lovely weather we're having. We're so over it. And I know some of you guys are in places that it's really, really dry, but it's difficult uh, when you keep ruminants and it's the muddy time of year and you're having the kind of weather that it's just four well, or five straight just, days of rain. If it stick to something, like if it's five days of rain and then three days of heat, it's like perfect breeding conditions for parasites. So yeah. It's... It's just really stressful, like, because this is, it's just a hard conditions to keep um, ruminants healthy in. We were in the basement and we were discussing some plans for this area and, uh, I was like, hey, there's a break in the rain. Let's go outside. Outside is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that's not true. Inside by the fire is your favorite. <laughs> when I can't be outside, that's true. <laughs> okay, so we have this big yard. It's really a yard. It's not a field. Backyard and then behind it. This is probably, yeah, I would say this is about half an acre. And we've had lots of animals back here over the course of six years. So we have not been, oh goodness, I'm about to trip on camera. <laughs> I'm tangled in that stick. <laughs> so we have not uh, kept it a secret that we don't plan on like forever staying on this property. Now a lot of you guys cannot wrap your heads around that. Why are we not gonna stay here, Maya? It's not enough land for what we ultimately want to do. Right, so we have like this ultimate dream and we'll just tell it to you for posterity's sake. We would love to have a really big farm someday. We would like to raise cattle um, and not just raise our food, but raise food for people who can't do it themselves. And basically we would love to have like an education center, a restaurant, a restaurant. like this is our like long-term vision is to have the kind of place where people can come, uh, do internships, learn regenerative farming, where we can sell and serve food and really um, support the homesteading community and movement. And so that is like our vision for Roots and Refuge Farm eventually. This is that in seed form. Uh, this is basically us learning to raise food ourselves because you can't teach somebody something that you don't know. And so this is our efforts to kind of learn what we want to do. We've made tons of mistakes. Uh, like we're saying, we're really trying to get into more of like a regenerative way of doing things with grazing rotationally and really using the land better. So that's going to bring some changes for us. But that's what we're trying to do is we're learning. This is our classroom so that later we can have a classroom for other people. Uh, that means that we've changed gears a lot of times. I mean, like we've, we've, we've just learned. It's been like, well, let's try this, let's try that. I mean, we started with zero experience. Um, with no lots of planning, lots of planning. None of those plans actually came out the way we thought. Some things happen the way you plan, but honestly, like you learn along the way and change. And it's just, it's constantly fluctuating and fluid. Yeah. Like yeah. honestly, this whole homesteading thing is so fluid. It is. And it's truly like, I mean, we've had to just be fluid. And so there have been curveballs for us. We didn't expect Jeremiah's mom to pass away. That was like, obviously, uh, kind of a game changer for us. And we had to figure out what we were doing there and lots of things have changed. So we're gonna share kind of what we're looking at for this space. This is gonna be some of our last big projects for this property. And I said all of that to tell you that like, even though we don't plan on staying here forever, for us, that is not a deterrent when it comes to investing in this property because we believe in legacy in all forms, and we believe that if you live your life for legacy, then no matter where you are or what you're doing, if you're investing in somebody's future, then it's not wasted. And so for us, you, you're gonna see us doing some things that you might be like, why are you doing that if you're not planning on staying there? I mean, we're planting perennials, we're putting in berry bushes. I don't know how long we're gonna be here. We still could be here for a couple years, but like, somebody some somebody whether it's us or somebody that we know and love or somebody that we haven't met yet somebody is going to reap that fruit and so to me that makes it worth sowing one of the things that we're going to finish here that again might not make sense but i just feel compelled to do it is i've i really want to put a shop in like one thing that we don't have here is a good place for storing stuff storing keeping tools like getting the tractor out of the rain I mean, brooding animals, like we don't have a big, big barn or anything like that. And so um, a big shop would be, it's been honestly one of my, the things that I've wanted most on this property. So we've resolved that we're gonna put a shop in. How exactly we're gonna put a shop in, I don't know. Like there's a lot that goes into that. I know I could do a lot of the work myself, um, but there's also some parts of it that I know I can't do. So we've been really focusing on paying off debt and that should be coming to a point here soon, like in a few months. And once that happens, we've agreed that the next really big thing that we're gonna look at is putting a shop in. So we're gonna be researching and believing that 
it'll work out and that we'll be able to put a shop in. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I can't say other than that because I know they're expensive and it takes a lot of work and materials and stuff, but. So how this even came up for discussion uh, was that Maya did a vlog recently and I was editing it. I edit videos when he does them. And he was talking about the junkyard, which you can see that it's, everything's kind of moved out of here and piled up here. And he was talking about kind of some contraptions he was going to build here for storage. And I was editing this video and I called him and I said, hey, I really think that you need to think about and pray about putting a shop in back here. And he was like, really? And I said, yeah, I really just think that we should think about that. And again, like we said, it's one of those things, I don't know how long we're going to be here, so that might not seem like the wisest investment, but I think that that's what we're going to do. And I can't give you much details about it, because I don't, we don't know yet. We haven't worked that we out. We haven't settled on size or any kind of design. But it's going to be back here. It'll be back here where the junk pile was. We're probably going to take out this old breeding uh, pen where the ducks are currently staying. This is, this is actually where our first... This was one of our first chicken structures where we were breeding chickens. We were breeding like really high dollar chickens, decided to get out of that because it was a really competitive market and we wanted to focus more on grown food. We've been keeping our ducks in here, but we're actually gonna put them in with our alpacas because actually um, running ducks with alpacas is supposed to help reduce the worm load. reduce worm load because ducks actually eat some of the worms that alpacas can die from. So we're gonna put ducks in with them. We're actually getting some more ducks from Murray McMurray. Right. We have pecans now. So this is gonna be opened up, leaving that tree. That tree will stay. I think this cluster is the one that's gonna. So this cluster is actually gonna have to go. It, it's for the shop to go in here, and also because we're looking at some gardens back here. This one drops branches and uh, it throws a lot of shade. I haven't decided on this one. And this one we would like to keep because those are pecans. They're not great for eating for us, but it hangs over the pig yard. So it's kind of like free pig food. So that leaves all of this space open and we're not keeping animals in here. We've, we've now got all the perimeter area for animals and we're working on getting this ready for animals. I mentioned recently we're going to take the Bradford pear tree down uh, because these are, they're just kind of nuisance trees. They're not responsible pear trees as uh, I said in the last vlog and some people kind of got a kick out of, but they're not. They're not responsible trees to have. There's another Bradford pear tree up by the garden. We're going to go ahead and take that one out too while we're taking this one out. And then here, this little eyesore area, um, all this is coming out. So this is actually getting moved and it's going to become a turkey house because we're going to be keeping heritage breed turkeys. They're going to be up that way once that tree and fence comes down. So this is all going to be really open. And this soil is some of the most fertile soil on our property. Um, even though we do have a lot of shale and clay because we've kept animals on this yard for six years. And the reason we came out here in the first place, now that we've caught you up to snuff on everything that we've already discussed, was we were coming out here to figure out what exactly we're doing for the gardens that we're gonna do back here, because we're gonna do some in-ground growing. Uh, some of this is going to be just trialing um, and experimenting with different ways to grow. Um, I feel incredibly privileged and blessed that as a job, I get to share growing gardens with you guys. And so for me, it is absolutely a benefit to try things that I might not need to try. I could probably grow most of our needs in the gardens we already have, but I just love this classroom and I love getting to try new things. So my hope is to have a space back here to do some three sisters gardening, to do some kind of spread out gardening, to practice with um, not watering and not needing water. And one of the things that we are discussing still doing on this property, and we have not nailed this down for sure, but we are discussing the possibility of still doing a high tunnel hoop house right, right here. The reason for that would be because in our zone, we can grow all winter in something like that. And then also, if we get the right type of high tunnel that can be well ventilated, we can actually grow through the summer 
and um, may have more success growing things like tomatoes because um, we can really keep the moisture off of them a little bit more. So that's what we're thinking about doing. Haven't nailed that down. Now, if you'll recall, at one point, we had applied for a grant from the NRCS to do a, get a free or a grant essentially for a high tunnel. And basically you pay for it and you get that reimbursed. And if you are in a place that you would like, I mean, check it out. There are different eligibilities in different states, but in some states where people aren't growing a lot of food, you're almost guaranteed to get it. It's a really cool program. However, one of the uh, stipulations of it was that you needed to commit to staying in the same place for five years. And since we don't know and we really aren't sure where we're going to be, we just weren't willing to commit to something that we couldn't actually commit to. So we decided to pass on the NRCS grant and what we're looking at possibly now is doing a high tunnel that would have uh, no strings attached that we could just get one and uh, aren't 100% sure on that either, but uh, if we did put something like that, we could take it with us um, if we were to leave. Honestly, standing out in this big space, knowing that we could turn as much as we want into gardens, but then we actually have to maintain it, is one, incredibly exciting, and also a little bit daunting. Because honestly, we're talking about the potential to grow a lot of food. It's also a lot of work. So kind of looking at it, making our decisions of what we want to do, keeping in mind the possibility of a future greenhouse and a future shop. Uh, that's kind of where what we're looking at. And we came out here to discuss it because we were trying to figure out which trees we would definitely need to bring down while we're moving these buildings out. We're going to go ahead and take those down. Fine. What has it? I just didn't press record on that last little run. Okay. Say it again. Just say it all again. Which, what? <laughs> Which last one? The one you started it. Okay. <laughs> what were you even talking about? Oh, let me see. I used to feel really nervous doing videos like this because I would feel like, I guess, embarrassed or... Well, making a lot of commitments and like, what if we change our mind? What if it doesn't work what out? What if it doesn't work out? Which what has happened to us? What like... if we fail? That was always a really scary one. And honestly, it was one of the biggest hangups I had about living our lives so transparently on YouTube was because I would feel like a failure when things didn't work out or when we decided to go a different direction. But we were actually just discussing it before we came out here. And I was like, let's just go lay this out. Let's walk and talk and share our plans because this is what I'm dreaming about right now. And guys, I want to give you permission to like dream beyond yourselves and give you permission to change your minds and go a different direction to learn, to know better and do better. You know, I look at some of the things we did when we first got started. We've been replacing all of the rotten oak posts from when we built our first couple of garden beds because we genuinely, we didn't know that if you built something with oak, there was going to rot in five years. You probably knew. I knew. We didn't have any money. We didn't have any money. <laughs> Wow, we didn't have any money. And so we, we cut didn't those have any down more from cedar. We already used up all the cedar we had. So we cut them down out of our woods. We did the best we could with what we had at the time. And now we're having to redo it, which is not that big of a deal. And we know better and we do better. We we're able to do better, so we do. And while we're out here walking around and talking and dreaming and thinking, I'd like to do this and I think this would be awesome. I, I want to share that with you guys. Because yeah. then it, you know, if it all goes through and it all happens, you can celebrate with us and you'll know what a big deal it is. I don't know. I love dreaming. I, being able to come out on the break of a rainy winter day and walk around and just imagine what you're going to do with just like the full imagination. I have imagination. no problem dreaming whenever I know that... It's not even that where I know for sure that we're going to be capable, but like I know that something will happen that will help it come through like because it's happened so many times where it's like you know dreaming beyond what your budget is capable of is hard sometimes yeah because like we've walked around and been like this is what we're dreaming but had no way of making it happen um and then something would work out and we'd I was, be able to do it i was talking to um a lady the other day that is a viewer of the channel and she's wanting to build raised garden beds and she was figuring out the cost and she was trying to figure out where she was going to get the cedar to build them and she had no idea where she was going to get it and she's literally like okay i'm committing in my heart that this is something that i really want to do 
but I don't really know how this is going to work out. She doesn't even have a truck to like carry it. Oh, and wow. literally a neighbor shows up and is with a bunch of trees he had cut down, some cedar trees. And it was like, hey, I'm going to get these milled. Do you want them for your garden beds? <laughs> I mean, just like, I mean, just like answer to prayer right there. Hey, like, I'm going to go mill these for you. <laughs> deliver them it was something you, right? like, it was just like this crazy, immediate, here it is. Here, here's the solution. And so, for the dreamers. shop, for example, is like, that's kind of the big thing that I'm like, man, that feels like a big bite. Like, and a big commitment to say, hey guys, we're going to put in a shop because I just, I know that it's not cheap. It's beyond my skill. So, it'll be stretching me in that regard. And, you know, it probably won't happen that, like, a helicopter will come and deliver a shop on a, you know, with a paddle. <laughs> and call. Like, that's not kind of how it's going to go. But I'm telling you, like, something, will work, something will work out and then we'll share about it. And you guys can go back to this video and reference, you know, I don't know how this is going to work out, but something will come. Yeah. Anyway, walk and talk, dream, make plans. And if any of you guys have a helicopter service, <laughs> thank you guys for hanging out with us today for, uh, walking around what I think in the future is going to be a very wonderful and productive space. I bless you guys. Until next time.